Right, it's three o'clock on my end. Um, I know some people may continue to join in, so I'll wait just another minute. But while waiting for people to join again, wanted to say welcome to everybody again. Today's session will be recorded, so if anyone's not able to attend or um, wants to reference this material later on, absolutely. We'll also be sharing the presentation as well. So again, my name's Laura, and on the line as well, we have Lynn and Amanda. So happy to talk through with you um, any of your questions related to the KI HIP program. Um, again, just for today's webinar, if you do have any questions, feel free to submit them through that Q&A feature um, or chat, and then we'll be able to address as many as we can. If we don't get to your question today, don't worry, we will be compiling them and can distribute an updated FAQ out later. So again, um, today's the intention is to really provide some updated information on the KI HIP program. It's been a couple of years since some information was shared and there's been some enhancements come through to really help elevate that member experience. I'm very excited to talk to everyone today as we actually have a lot of the waiver participants who are currently enrolled in KI HIP. So really looking forward to sharing with you this information and just, you know, that you can help us reach out and share this information with participants who aren't currently enrolled in the program. So starting with a high level overview, the Commonwealth has actually had a health insurance premium payment um, commonly known as a HIP program for over 20 years. So HIP programs, most states have some version of a HIP program and they're intended to help families who have at least one Medicaid member on the policy pay for private health insurance through an employer. So back in 2019, the older HIP program in Kentucky was integrated with what is now known today as the Kentucky Health Insurance Premium Payment or KI HIP program. So KI HIP, a voluntary Medicaid program offered to Medicaid members to help pay for the cost of an employer-sponsored insurance, also known as an ESI plan. So KI HIP falls under the Department for Medicaid Services within the Cabinet for Health and Family Services. A um, couple fun facts that, again, I don't think everyone is aware of on this call, is that right now in terms of membership, we have over 460 waiver participants who are currently enrolled in KI HIP. So again, some of the great benefits that we'll go into in a little bit further detail on is that KI HIP helps reimburse that premium payment for either the policyholder, whether they be a Medicaid member themselves or they have that Medicaid member on the family. And those who are enrolled in KI HIP, because we get a lot of questions about this, um, they don't lose their Medicaid benefits. Just because they're enrolled in an ESI plan, they are still entitled to all their Medicaid benefits. And really what we wanted to share with you all today is this information as, you know, we want to help families with those higher healthcare costs potentially save money. We also really want to grow um, KI HIP membership by increasing awareness to these waiver participants. And then the program also helps the Commonwealth remain fiscally responsible. And you're probably thinking, well, Laura, well, can you talk me through that a little bit more? And on this next slide here, um, I really like this one because we try and highlight um, the benefits for both the state as well as the Medicaid members and their families. So um, in terms of when I say, well, it helps the Commonwealth remain fiscally responsible. So when someone gets enrolled in that ESI plan, they become the Medicaid member's primary payer and Medicaid becomes the secondary payer. So if you have a Medicaid member go into a doctor's office and have a medical encounter, then that ESI insurance, they would be um, the primary payer. And then anything not covered, um, as long as they're a Medicaid provider, which we'll go a little bit more into, uh, Medicaid would just be that secondary payer. Um, again, another thing we want to call out here is the Medicaid member does get access to those added benefits of being on an ESI plan. So not only do they maintain their Medicaid benefits, but they're also going to be have access to all the benefits associated with that employer health plan. Another big thing just wanted to call out here, and this is a question we do get asked is, well, for the premium reimbursement, I understand that you're reimbursing the Medicaid members portion, but what if it's 
do you ever reimburse the premium for the entire family? And in certain cases, yes. If, if it's found to be cost effective, and if there's any questions to that, um, Amanda can speak to that in a little bit, is that in some cases, KI HIP can reimburse the premium for that entire family. So again, um, a lot of great benefits for this program, and we want to make sure that we're getting the word out about this as it could be benefits to some of the families that you're currently talking to every day. And you're probably thinking now, well, Laura, you've just said a lot of information, and how do I know if um, some one of the families that I serve, they could be eligible for KI HIP? And really, like to, the way I like to simplify it is if you've got a policyholder or someone who's either enrolled in an employer health plan or has access to it, and you've got a Medicaid member on that policy, then they could be potentially eligible for KI HIP. And the reason why I say potentially eligible is there's a lot of different health plans out there and the KI HIP team, they all want to double check and do a plan compatibility review. So they're looking to make sure that first, this plan is cost effective, meaning that that plan costs the state less than it costs to cover the Medicaid member alone through Medicaid. They also want to make sure it's a comprehensive health care plan. So again, just there's certain categories that we want to make sure that the health plan covers and is providing as well. And so again, when you're thinking through like, well, how do I know if someone is eligible? Just the easiest way I like to say it is if there's a Medicaid member on the policy and they've got access, there is no harm in applying. Um, so absolutely. And we'll talk through how to apply and what that process looks like in just a little bit. So next up, um, again, want this to be interactive. Don't want it just to be you listening to me um, ramble on for 30 minutes. So we'll start off with the first poll question, which is what does KI HIP stand for? And while we get that launch, I'm going to take a sip of water. For those of you in Kentucky, I'm in Lexington. If, if you have allergies, then you know. <laughs> It's, it's that time of year. And we'll give it just a couple more seconds, give people time to answer. And if for whatever reason your poll did not pop up, that, that is okay, that happens sometimes. Um, it's just technology. All right, it looks like Yep, the answers have slowed down and looks like majority got that one correct. It is B, it's the Kentucky Integrated, if my slide will work, there we go, Kentucky Integrated Health Insurance Premium Payment Program. And then one more for you before we move on to the next set of content is what are some of the benefits of the KI HIP program? And I'll give everyone just a couple seconds to answer. All right, it looks like responses have slowed down and the answer is all of the above. So KHIP program, it may reimburse families for the entire premium, um, even if that entire household is not um, Medicaid eligible. Um, they're gonna have access to both that health insurance program through the employer as well as through Medicaid. So a lot of great benefits with the program. Next up, we'll talk through a little bit about the processes. Um, so if you get someone who says, well, this is great, now how do I apply? So we'll, we'll spend a couple seconds just talking through all that. So first and foremost, when you're thinking through that member enrollment, you'll want to start at step one and applying for KI HIP. Um, the, way, the main way that we recommend people apply is to go online to that connect.ky.gov forward slash benefits there is a standalone KI HIP application that the individual is able to go online and complete. Um, they're also able to utilize DCBS. Um, they're able to call the hotline as well. And then you also have the KI HIP inbox. So anytime there's ever any questions, someone can email that kihip.program at ky.gov and reach Amanda 
and she'll be able to help with any of those questions. Now, something I do wanna call out here that's important is when they're filling out that application, they're gonna to wanna to submit some documentation we'll go over shortly, which is premium rate sheet and a summary of benefits and coverage. This is information that the individuals can get from their HR department as well. And then once they submit that application on Connect, then the KI HIP team is going to do a review to make sure that the um, health plans that they submitted are both cost effective and comprehensive. That'll generate a notice that we'll go through again in just a little bit that'll just confirm, yep, you're good to go. We'll send you additional information on next steps and all that good stuff. And then finally, um, staying enrolled in the program, really prioritize making this as seamless as possible. And all the individual has to do is continue to pay that health insurance premium and then just submit proof of that payment, typically a pay stub to the KI HIP team when they get a notice. Typically that's only about once or twice a year, um, but again, they just need to pay attention to those notices on when to submit that information. And then um, these are examples of those documents that the KI HIP team reviews when determining if the health plan is cost effective and comprehensive. Um, these are just example screenshots here because different health plans, they, they all have a slightly different look. But when the individual is getting ready to apply, they're going to want to go to their HR department and get this documentation. So the first one's just a premium rate sheet that details the rates for the insurance plan and then the SB. C form, it just shows some different comparisons on costs and like what's covered under the plan as well. So again, these will just be some documentation that we always tell people when you get ready to apply, make sure you pull this since that'll just make the application process a little bit easier. All right, <clears throat> and then in terms of what happens after they submit that documentation, then the KI HIP team is going to review it and do a plan compatibility review is what it's called. So once they make a determination of, yes, you know, these plans, they are eligible for KI HIP, they'll update that, and then it'll generate an automatic notice. Um, it's really a notice of health insurance review, just letting the individual know like, hey, we completed the review, you know, this health plan is or is not eligible for KI HIP, and then that notice will um, provide additional next steps. So something I did want to call out here, because we've had this question come up a couple times, is, well, a lot of times with employers, they're only able to sign up for insurance once a year, typically open enrollment. Some employers, that's April. Others, it's November, December timeframe. I want to say in the state, actually, it's October is their open enrollment period. A cool fact we'd like to point out is there's actual federal regulation where if someone is deemed eligible for a HIP program, that qualifies as a life event. So meaning, um, so a life event, a lot of us may be thinking of this as, you know, um, birth of a child, adoption, marriage, um, those, those are other examples of qualifying life events. Well, being eligible for a HIP program is one. So even if it's outside of that standard open enrollment period, then a person can go ahead and enroll anyway. Other couple things want to run through here is when you're thinking through the individuals, these, these scenarios just talk through um, both an individual and a family, what that looks like. So again, um, a policyholder, um, they don't, their employer doesn't have to be in the state. It could be out of state, but the big thing to note here is that Medicaid member must reside here in Kentucky. And really this slide just shows an example of an individual scenario and a family who were determined eligible and enrolled in the HIP program. So looking at scenario one, that individual who'd be a Medicaid member, um, we're looking at things like premium frequency, deductible copay. So they're KI HIP approved. So they're getting that reimbursement of almost $94 um, when that happens. And then for the family, um, in this case, they're KI HIP approved. And so they're getting that reimbursement of uh, just under $143 as well. So again, it's, you don't have to be, the policyholder doesn't have to be a Medicaid member themselves. It's just, there has to be a Medicaid member on that policy.
And then I saw one question. Yes, we will be sharing. Um, actually, there's a KI HIP webpage that we'll be discussing in just at the end of this presentation that you can direct um, families towards. So we do have some public information tailored to them as well. Great question. Now, you may get some information questions from the families about, well, what happens once I'm enrolled? What do I have to do? So the big thing we want to call out here, and it's just because in the past we've had questions come up from families about this, is that Kate, the Medicaid member, so they're going to want to, when they go to a doctor's office and have that medical encounter, give two cards. They're going to want to give them the insurance card and the Medicaid card. And the reason for that is, is remember that insurance, the ESI plan is going to become the primary payer. But in the event there's any costs or things that the ESI plan doesn't cover and they want Medicaid to um, be that secondary payer, then we want to make sure both of that information is given to the provider so billing can be processed accordingly. Um, typically, this doesn't cause any issues with providers. Um, there's no changes to how they bill or process that payment. Um, they just take down that you have a primary and a secondary insurance and process it accordingly. And another big thing wanted to call out here as well is that the medical costs covered by KI HIP. So something do you want to call out here is with KI HIP, you want to make sure that that Medicaid member is still going to a Medicaid provider. Now, the good thing in, in Kentucky, about 90 some percent of providers, they're Medicaid. So the only time where that can get a little bit tricky is sometimes specialists um, are not Medicaid providers. So it's very important. And what we always say is, you know, making sure that Medicaid provider is <clears throat> your the Medicaid member is going to those Medicaid providers. Um, just because in the event they go to someone who's not Medicaid, then again, there may be some out of pocket costs incurred in case that employer sponsored insurance if there's any um, residual fees over that, if that may, again, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat's killing me with the allergies. But that's just something we want to call out because we do get questions about that is, well, what happens if I go to someone who's not a Medicaid provider? It's our, our recommendation is um, to go and continue to see them. And then finally, again, with member responsibilities, this is a part that's um, changed in the last couple of years. It used to be, um, and some of you may recall that the Medicaid members had to submit proof of payment with every, with every pay stub. Um, that's changed, um, just again, to enhance that member experience. So once you're enrolled in KI HIP, the policyholder is gonna wanna continue to first have that Medicaid member on their plan remain employed and enrolled in the ESI plan. They're also gonna to wanna to make sure they continue to pay that premium and then just submit proof of premium payment when a notice is received. Typically a notice will go out about once a year. Sometimes there may be additional notices, again, just depending on the situation, but it, we always just tell people we'll submit a notice when it's received. And what's really nice is that the members get a reminder notice about, oh, 90 days before that coverage ends. So if it's, if the coverage is ending in December, typically around that October, November timeframe, right around there is when they'll get a notice of, hey, you know, got to make sure you want to update that information. And again, I see some couple questions coming in. We We'll have some time at the end, about five or seven minutes to go through the questions. So again, we're we'll almost through the main presentation and then we'll get right into Q&A. Um, again, just quick reminder here on how you submit documents to the KI HIP team. First and foremost, always recommend going through connectky.gov. That is the quickest way to upload documentation and get it over to KI HIP team quickly. Um, you also have the email as well. So members can absolutely call that 855 number, but if there's anything immediate or urgent or any questions that they want to get answered, um, definitely recommend reaching out to that kihip.program at ky.gov email. There is also a mail option as well. 
And then finally, we've just got a couple more knowledge checks before we go into the public resources available and then open it up for Q&A. So for this next knowledge check, um, again, just what's the fastest way to submit documentation and apply for KIHIP? We understand there's multiple ways, but there is one that we typically refer. So give it just a moment while we get the poll launched. All right, it looks like um, responses are slowing down. And so for those of you who picked online at Connect, you are correct. Um, absolutely, the email is another great way to get that information to the KI HIP team, but just given the volume and number of people, it's, it's and especially with email, it may take a day or so to respond to. So we just always tell people, you know, first and foremost, connect, but if you do have any urgent questions, um, there is that email available. Next up, this one I always tell people be careful with is what's one of the which one of the following is not an ongoing KI HIP member responsibility. All right, it looks like cancers are slowing down. And for those of you who picked B, you are correct. Yep, we, we really wanted to prioritize making the membership as efficient and easy as possible. So again, just the number of times people have to submit um, payments, especially that online or proof of premium payment, as well as that online application is just, we, we wanna make that as seamless as possible. And then one of you had a question earlier about where to direct people if they have questions or materials for the public. So we do have a KI HIP webpage that is up and available today with a lot of great information. We have a member handbook that's available, a lot of one pagers, um, FAQ documentation. If anyone's like, okay, I wanna go and apply what information I need, we've got a checklist available as well as some videos that are available as well. And when we send out this information afterwards, we'll make sure to include the link to this in the body of that email. Um, something else we wanted to call out too is sometimes you can have employers who have questions about KI HIP. Um, so there are materials as well on the website um, that are specific to employers. So if there's ever any questions about that, um, just want to let everyone know this information is available too. And then right now we've, we've gone into the, Q, we're entering the Q&A, but really quickly before we start answering those questions, I wanted to let you all know, um, if you ever have any direct questions to the KI HIP team, um, Teresa Shields and Amanda Kelly, Amanda's on the call today. Um, they're available to answer your questions, or if you have an individual who just, um, they, they need more information, again, we're, we're absolutely here to help. So with that, I'll pause and open it up for questions. Um, Amanda, I see that you are on the line. So I'll just pause and see if you have anything to add. I know we've covered a lot of information today. Not really. I've tried to answer the questions as they've came up. One of the things that I have put in the chat to everybody, I did put the website if they'd like it in copy, face, copy and paste form, as well as email us because questions are going to come up after this. We have no problem that kihip.program at ky.gov. I will get it answered as soon as possible and I can get any information out to you all that is needed. Thank you, Amanda. And Yaelene, if I'm mispronouncing your name, I apologize. I see you would raise your hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
You should be able to speak now. I don't know if your question was already addressed earlier, but um, I unmuted you. So I'll just see if you have any questions. You might still be on mute. And again, I don't know if they answered the question earlier in the Q&A. And then just going through a couple more questions. Um, I know some people ask, is there an age limitation? No, there, there's no age limitation. And then I know Amanda, you had said that there's a couple of reasons why a plan could become un be incompatible. Um, the big thing would just be it doesn't meet one of those 10 areas of coverage, that comprehensiveness. And then yes, we will be making um, this slide available to everyone. We're also recording today's session and that'll be posted um, so you'll be able to reference later on as well. And then let's see here. I don't believe there's any other questions at this time, but Alicia, I see you're on the line. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else you'd like to add to today's conversation, but I'll, I'll open it up to Amanda, Alicia, if there's anything else you'd like to comment on. Um, I don't really have anything to add. I appreciate everybody who has um, attended today's session. I hope that you learned something. And like Amanda said, and the team, you know, if you have questions, um, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, they will definitely get you all the information that you need. So we appreciate um, you attending this learning opportunity. Thank you, Alicia. And again, if there's no other questions, we'll, we'll stay on the line for another minute or two. But um, again, we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap up today's session. And again, thank you all for joining and we'll stay on for just another minute or two. Oh, Amanda, I see in the chat, Sura had asked if your email at amandam.kelly is correct. I believe it is. It's just that M. I, I think it's probably the M. Just want to confirm. It, it is. I was getting ready to type. I can say it as well. The best is to go through the KIHIP inbox just because if I was to be out for any reason, then Teresa could go in and quickly respond to somebody if it was just something small. But if not, yes, the Amanda M. Kelly at ky.gov is my correct email. Thank you, Amanda. I don't think I'm seeing any other questions come in, so we'll go ahead and end today's session. But again, just thank you all for joining. Thank you, everyone.